Lesson 89. Okay, in this lesson, we're going to learn a little bit more about the preposition a and the way it gets used in uh, certain situations in Spanish. Of course, we already learned this word a few lessons ago. We learned that the preposition a means to, and we used it to make up sentences like uh, I go to the bank or I go to the store. So the preposition a basically just means to, uh, T-O. But in this lesson, we're going to learn about a special situation where the preposition a uh, gets used in a special way. And what we want to talk about is called the personal a. Now, I, uh, we've talked in the past about direct objects. Uh, a direct object is the target of the action being performed by the subject of the sentence. If you have a sentence that says, Bobby kicked the ball, then in that sentence, Bobby is the subject, kicked is the verb, and the word ball is the direct object. That is the noun that is the recipient or the target of the action, okay? So, so in Spanish, there's a special rule we have to follow when the direct object in a sentence is a human being, okay? Whenever the direct object is a human being, you have to put the preposition a in front of it. And this special usage of the preposition a is called the personal a. And we have an example here. Uh, the first example we have is yo veo a mi madre. And that means uh, in English, I see my mother. Now in this sentence, I is the subject, C is the verb, and mother is the direct object. The word mother, that's the target or the recipient of the action being performed. Okay? So in English, this sentence would simply be, I see my mother. But in Spanish, you can't just say, yo veo mi madre. Since the direct object is a human being, you have to put the preposition a in front of it. And again, that's called the personal a. So the Spanish sentence would read, yo veo a mi madre. So I guess if you were to translate this word for word, literally, it might say something like, I see to my mother. Now, of course, we don't really translate it into English that way. The personal a doesn't translate to anything. It just sort of gets left out of our English translation. But it's an important part of the Spanish sentence. So from now on, remember that when the direct object is a person, you have to put the personal a in front of it. And here in our exercises, we'll see this uh, several times and we'll get lots of practice with this and help you get used to using the personal a in actual Spanish sentences. Okay, let's take a look at our exercises together. In number one, yo veo means I see. And then we have a and then mis amigos. The thing that's being seen here is the mis amigos. That's the direct object. And since uh, these friends are human beings, we need to put the personal a in front of it. That's the preposition a. So instead of saying yo veo mis amigos, we need to say yo veo a mis amigos. So yo veo a mis amigos means I see my friends and todos los dias means every day. So number one will say, I see my friends every day. In number two, we have a question. The subject is the pronoun tu and the verb is ves. Together, tu and ves would say you see, but here they're in the form of a question so their positions are reversed. So we'll translate those two words as, do you see? The direct object here, that is the thing that's being seen, is tus amigos, your friends. And since they are human beings, we'll put the personal a in front of them. So the part of the sentence that says, ves tu a tus amigos, that will say, do you see your friends? And then todos los dias means every day. So number two will say, do you see your friends every day? 
In number three, ella ve means she sees, and su padre means her father. The word father, padre, that's the direct object, and since the father is a human being, we need to put the personal a in front of the word padre, or in this case, in front of su padre. So instead of saying, ella ve su padre, we'll say, ella ve a su padre, with the preposition a there, the personal a. And then todas las semanas means every week. So number three will say, she sees her father every week. In number four, nosotros vemos means we see. And then we have los niños. That's the direct object, the thing that's being seen. And since the children, the niños, are human beings, we need to have the personal a in front of them. And so it will say, nosotros vemos a los niños. Todos los días means every day. So number four will say, we see the children every day. In number five, mi hijo means my son. The verb here is compra. That's third person singular to agree with hijo. So, mi hijo compra will say, my son buys. Comida means food, and todas las semanas means every week. So, number five will say, my son buys food every week. In number six, we have a question. The subject is the pronoun tu, and the verb is quieres. The words tu and quieres mean you want. But here, uh, the sentence is a question, so they are reversed. So we'll translate quieres tu as do you want? And then ung is an indefinite article that means a or an, and perro means dog. So number six says, do you want a dog? In number seven, we have the word si, that means yes. Yo quiero means I want. Un perro means a dog. También means also, and un gato means a cat. So number seven will say, yes, I want a dog and also a cat. In number eight, tu vas means you go. Al is a combination of the words a and el, so it means to the. Banco means bank. So the first four words of this sentence will say, you go to the bank. Kong means with. Tu padre means your father, and todas las semanas means every week. So number eight will say, you go to the bank with your father every week. In number nine, mi perro means my dog. The verb here is trabaja, that means work, and it's being negated by the word no. So mi perro no trabaja will say, my dog does not work. Then we have the word pero, which means but, and siempre means always. And then we have another verb, come, which is third person singular, to agree with the pero, the dog, and that means eats. So number nine will say, my dog does not work, but he always eats. Notice how in the second part of the sentence, we did not need to repeat the subject of the sentence it was already clear that the dog was the one eating, so we just left out the subject of the sentence in the second part, and we inserted the word he, because the pronoun he is included within the verb come. In number 10, mis hijos means my sons, but often it just means my children. The verb here is quieren, that's third person plural, and means want. So, mis hijos quieren, we'll translate that as, my children want. Un gato means a cat, so number 10 will say, my children want a cat.